Hello everyone, it's Melanie coming to you again from my sewing room. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I noticed on my last video that I made in this room, I was uh, very quiet. It was very quiet. So I'm going to try and speak a little louder and I hope the lighting's okay. Um, I was going to share this. I'm working on a new um, a new journal cover and I'm really liking where it's going. Um, so I thought I would share with you kind of how I got to this point and then um, and then I can work on a little bit um, we, and I can chat some. So I knew I wanted to do another cover, another journal. Or, see, I thought I had everything together. Now I'm gonna have to edit that out. So these are the ones that, that you saw in the last video. Um, this is the one I had started on. Am I in the... And here's kind of where it is so far. I haven't decided what else I wanna do, uh, what else I wanna do to it, but I'm kind of stuck on it. So I decided I wanted to do another one and I was thinking about looking for some piece for inspiration, like a piece of art or something like that. So I went, the first thing I flipped open, I grabbed this Daphne's Diary magazine. Um, this is from 2018. And I first flipped it to this page and I was like, okay, that would be a beautiful journal cover. Um, I mean, every, look at this, look at this woman's studio. Oh my goodness. I have these, I have some pink ones. They're hanging right over there. Um, anyway, this was the first thing that I thought, okay, well I could do mint greens, soft pinks, bring in some roses, that kind of thing. So that was the first thing I looked at. And then I thought, let me look at my glue books and see if I can find any other like color inspiration or something like that. So I started flipping through here and I saw this, which I had uh, put pink stuff and gold on the same page. And I thought maybe it would be pretty to do this pink and mint kind of thing, but bring in like some gold um, and not like yellow gold, like actual metallic gold. So that was kind of what I saw in this one. And then I flipped, I picked up another one of my glue books. This one isn't very full and it's mostly home decor stuff. But I flipped to this picture. Okay, I cannot remember what magazine I tore this out of. Um, it was probably, I don't know, it may have even been a Better Homes and Gardens. I love this image. I just love the... I love this fabric with this rug. So when I saw this, it made me think of two things. It made me think of this piece of fabric that I have that I got um, from Rachel at Roxy Creations when I bought one of her uh, fabric sampler packs. And I don't know if I mentioned, I, I bought that stuff from Rachel and it just sat in the bag because it was, too precious to use, you know, okay. So this was still a little too precious to actually cut into, and I absolutely adore the colors. So it made me think of this, this, this image did. And then with that rug, I remembered some fabric that I saw in my scrap bin yesterday, which is this, is what kind of made me think of that rug. So I thought, okay, I'll do a I'll do a journal cover inspired by this image, um, where I'm going to put together this floral as my focal point and um, bring in this fabric, which reminded me um, of this rug, and then go with how she, how it's got natural tones. Um, she's got turquoise here and kind of a minty green there. This bed is gold. There's gold polka dots there. Should have brought that in. Um, there's a peachy color, so I still have some of this 
peach silk that I might pull in somewhere. So this is my inspiration. Um, and this is where it's taken me so far. So again, I started with a foundation of burlap. Um, I ordered some paper, some 88 pound printer paper, printer's paper, like that you block print or screen print on. Um, I ordered some paper from uh, Blick and it should be here hopefully before the end of the week. But I ordered some that's pre-cut to six by nine. So I went ahead and sized this cover to hopefully fit that paper when I get it. It's, um, and I'll hinge it like I did in the last one um, and sew those, sew those in. So it's already fit for paper that I don't have yet, but I'll have to get to that. And then there's just no way that I could cut this beautiful piece of fabric up. So I scanned it and printed it on one of these um, inkjet fabric sheets. And I reduced it a little bit because um, I knew since I knew that my paper was gonna be six by nine, I knew how big my cover was and I thought that was too big. So I reduced it a little bit and printed it out. I printed multiples because I don't wanna waste any of this, this paper or that inkjet stuff. Put that over there. So I did that and trimmed it out, put it on the front here. Um, this and this linen back behind here are um, two of the, the, from two of the garments that I got at the 25 cent thrift store. And then I tea dyed them when I was tea dyeing some paper the other day. So I layered those on top of my burlap and then I put, this is a really pretty silk and linen damask fabric back here. Um, and then I put, so I put that on and I put this pretty like Batiste cotton back there. So I kind of um, basted those on and then I've just been stitching stuff sort of on, on top of it. Um, for the cover, I couldn't decide if I wanted to leave the cover like a raw edge sticking up or if I wanted to hem it. And, <clears throat> and so I pressed, I pressed all the edges under and then when I started sewing, I was gonna attach it and I was just gonna do a zigzag, you know, stitch around here. And then when I started sewing, I didn't realize that this was tucked under. So I had already gone like this far when I realized that it was tucked under. So I guess that meant I was. So now it's gonna be like, it'll be hemmed. But this will, I'll finish the outside and then I'll attach what's gonna be on the, the end paper on the inside. Um, I didn't like, I don't like the look of this exposed, um, this zigzag stitching. So over here, I just got some really tiny old lace and stitched it on top of the zigzag, which I like. I like the way that looks. And then I don't have any more of that, which actually this and this are two different pieces. But I think uh, when I finish the back, I think I'm gonna stitch this. I think there's enough of this. And I can stitch it on over that other zigzag so I don't have to look at that zigzag stitch. So I just stitched this on um, right here with this. This is just three strands of embroidery floss. I stitched that on like that. So my thought with this was that I want to embroider on top of it. So that's what I've been doing here is kind of playing with um, different embroidery things that I want to do on top of it. Uh, and then I thought, oh, I could even do some ribbon, silk ribbon em embroidery on top of it. I haven't decided quite yet if I want, you know, once I finish, I haven't decided yet if I want to trim this trim this fabric back. So I'm just gonna leave it like it is. Um, I just put it on, I just basted it on with some uh, basting, you know, big long basting stitches. So all these stitches around the outside edges will come off um, after I've finished 
doing the stitching and stuff on the inside. And then I've also been to attach the this piece. Um, I've just been kind of stitching on top of the pattern here like that as I go around. So oh, I did actually make a list. The other thing I was gonna tell you, for the inside, I started stitching this on the back. I was just gonna do some of these running stitches uh, all up and down on the back of the book. But then after I got this one and a half rows done, I thought, you know, I should do this after I put my lining in. Lining, like it's a, I'm talking like garment stuff. It's a, my end pages, I guess. So whatever I put in the back of the, in the, on the back of it, I think I'm gonna wait, I'll pull this out, but I'll wait and once I do whatever I'm gonna put on the inside, then I'll stitch through all those layers. I'm kind of tempted to put this on the inside too. This I got this pair of shorts, at, they were from The Gap, um, that I got at the 25 cent thrift. And I'm kind of tempted to put some of this inside there with some of this, which came from, this is a dress that I got at the 25 cent thrift. So I'm kind of tempted to stick that on the inside. I don't know, I'm kind of loving it. But I'm gonna wait until I finish the front and everything before I sew the inside in. Okay. Does all that make sense? Uh, I just, I like sharing with you guys. And I just spent the last almost two hours answering uh, comments. YouTube comments and so many of you had commented that you enjoyed um, <laughs> kind of the insight into my thought process um, or how you know how I arrive at things uh, so I thought I would kind of go ahead and keep sharing that with you Because as I sit here and work on this, um, I keep having other ideas. I did, at first, I had, oh, here's the fabric side. I, okay, so here's a little, another piece of that damask, that uh, silk and linen damask that's down here. Of course, I put all that stitching on, on top of it and you can't really see it. I thought about using some of this, which is a silk, but I couldn't decide where to put it. Um, I thought about, using a piece of this somewhere maybe. I don't know, maybe it'll go on the inside. And then I've got some more of the free motion stuff that I did. So I thought about using another one of those free motion hearts on there that I found this in my, some of my stuff. Uh, I found some, these buttons. I thought these buttons might look really pretty there. The only thing about these is it's gonna add bulk. So depending on how I end up using this journal, you know, I want to try to keep, if I'm going to use it like I'm actually going to write in it, then I don't know how bulky I want the cover, you know, bumpy, to have bumpy things on it. But I'm really liking these. I don't know. I like that too. I like all that on there. Uh, I actually had another piece. Here it is. I actually had in attached this, which is another a silk gingham, and I had attached it underneath the edge of this. And then I sewed it on by sewing one of these little tiny beads in each white square. And I had that on there, but it looked it looked too busy. It was like it was competing too much with what's going on here. So uh, I picked it out, I took all of it out. And now I've lost my place on this floss. There it is. So this this reminds me of one of those printed uh, printed embroidery kits my mom did in the seventies, and um, where that you know it would be like I, I'm sure you can still buy them today, where it's like a picture printed on the needlepoint on the, on the canvas, and then you just embroider over the top of it. Um, and so that's kind of what 
I was thinking here. I don't necessarily want to hide what's behind it. I want, I want you to still be able to see what's behind here. <clears throat> but I was thinking about it being, you know, um, quite textured if possible. And I'd love to put some beads on the front if I can. That's why I thought these 15 O's, these are, um, those are really tiny little, what are they? They're really tiny little beads. Those would be good, but I've also got such, I've got so, so many pretty beads that I would love to do some others on there. So on this, I think I'm just gonna go through and do kind of a combination of stitches, whatever, just, you know, straight stitches. These are like detached chain stitches or like a, like a lazy daisy, you know, kind of. I have done quite a bit of embroidery on top of pictures like this. And sometimes I've noted, well, not sometimes, but most of the time, because in my head, I'm, you know, all doing things the right way and whatever. So I try to match the thread to the, the picture exactly. But then what happens is when it's finished, you lose the embroidery. You, you can't even see it. So on this one, I thought I'm going to go a little darker, like with this blue, because I really, I want it to stand out. So uh, my time totally got away from me today. I was in here doing this, working on it, and I kept thinking, okay, I need to record. Let me you know, get the, do this, 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 and then I'll be ready to record something, you know. And so I was sitting here and I thought, um, oh, I need to do it. I mean, it's got to be, I bet it's at least noon. And I looked up at the clock and it was a uh, 1.42. I thought it was before noon. So time just totally got away from me today doing this. So I guess you can just get lost in this stitching, which is what I did. Anyway, I am all caught up, I think, on comments and reading through. I, I do read your comments when they come in, but sometimes it's I don't have time right then to sit down and reply or, you know, if I, depending on, I don't know, where I am, like sometimes I might read them if I'm waiting somewhere, I'll like, oh, see if I have any comments. And I read them on my phone or something and I don't like replying on there. So, but then the problem is I think, okay, I'm, I need to reply to that and this and this. And then they just keep adding up. You just keep commenting. Everybody says such nice things, but uh, it, anyway, then I just kind of feel overwhelmed, like, oh, I've got so many to work on. But anyway, I think I'm all caught up. I did get some good ideas for some videos from your, um, from your comments and things that you've asked for. So hopefully I can... Uh, work on some of those. So let me see what I want this to do. And this is how I usually work with this just sort of free hand. I, I don't... Unless I'm doing a single layer of, like, you know, embroidery on linen or something like, you know, like... Something like this. This kind of thing I'll work in a hoop. That's my house that I was working on. Um, so this kind of thing I'll put in a hoop, but anything like this, I don't, I don't like to hoop it at all. I just, 
I just go for it. Man, I am just loving the way that this is looking and feeling. Okay, I watched one of my other videos back the other day. And I think I said, I love something like 150 times. <sighs> I guess I love a lot of stuff. I could also do some, I could find some wool. I've got, and do like some cruel stitches on here. I'm not wild about this. The only thing that bugged me about this combination is that the green in this is kind is very minty, and then this is is more of an olivey kind of green. So I decided to go ahead and match this green to do my match this green, and I was going to do my stitching over here in this green so they'd match. Um, but I'm not sure if I wanna, I, I tried pulling in another green here that matches this a little better. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what I'll do. And I'm not sure how much I wanna do here if I wanna bring in ivory, you know, like really build it up. I guess it just depends. I mean, it's still relatively flat. So if I'm like writing in this journal, it still feels, you know, still feels pretty good. Okay, let me fasten this one off. And move on to something else. I was kind of jumping around on here. Mostly so I don't get bored with it. I was thinking about doing beads in the center. Oh, I should do beads in the centers of these. Let me see. Let's do that. Um, beads. What kind of bead I want in the middle of that? I mean, there's that. I mean, that's too bright. Though. Although, I mean, that matches. About that. Hmm. Almost like this. It's really crazy bright, but these are so pretty, though. These are, um, I mean, this is probably really hard to see. It's the glass of the bead is like a greenish yellow color, but the lining, the paint inside the bead is pink really pretty but I'm kind of liking the way that bright yellow just pops on there so I think I'm gonna do that yellow and then maybe with some other pink one of these pinks oh what about that that's cute I like that. Hopefully these aren't too big, you know, that they'd make big bumps. Let's see. I could put, ooh, I could put a sequin. Behind it, I have all these covers on it. Love these trays to organize the stuff, but they're kind of pricey. This is what I'm thinking of: a clear sequin. Those are old, or I could do a white. These are old too. These are these are like from the oh, that's pretty with that. These are from like the 50s. Not. That one with it. 
Do we like that? Let me play with, let me play with a couple of these just to see. those back before I spill them. See, now, okay, I just realized what I was doing. I'm whisk, I was talking quietly under my, to myself. I don't, I can't do that. Okay. I said, I need to put those beads back in the tube. Those are the ones I cut off. Okay, do we like? Uh, I don't think I'm liking that. So it'd be like, go in there, like that. No, I don't like the sequin. Maybe I can put sequins somewhere else, but I don't, I don't think I need them right there. I don't want them there. I don't, oh, I'm doing it again. I'm talking way too softly. So other ideas for videos, I have some other stuff I was working on that I'd love to share with you all. Should probably use beading, beading thread. Now, this, this is silk. This is the same silk I used up here. I'm just gonna use this because I don't wanna thread another thing. Oh, I like that. Yes. Just like that. Go through one more time since that's my first one on here. I don't think that'll be, um, I don't think that'll be too bumpy. But I also might not do a lot of writing in this this journal, it may end up being more like I don't know, more like an art journal than a writing journal. Okay, do I like those together? No, I don't. I like I, I don't, honestly I, I mean the pink that's in the print looks good there but I don't like the pink bead I like the yellow bead so I'm gonna stick with just oh which means I have to thread this again oh good sure actually worked my um You know, it was not very much, it wasn't very long ago that I could thread something like that without, I mean, I could see it just perfectly and now I can't. Having to wear reading glasses, which the problem with that, with the reading glasses is keeping them, cause I walk, I'll leave the room and I'll have them on my head and then I'll go do something in the other room and take them off and then leave them there. And so I, I never have them in the right place where I need them. How many more? One, two, three more. Let me put these up because I don't want those on there. Really stinks too because I had LASIK back in the day. I used to wear contacts all the time, but I was, um, I never had issues close up. Until I hit, I think 45 was when I started noticing, hmm, can't see very well. Close up. So it stinks after having LASIK and 
getting to go without glasses and contacts for so long, it really stinks having to wear glasses again and keep up with them. I like that. Can you see it? Let me stand up so I can see. Can you see that? I think that turned out cute. So I'll just have to decide how densely I want to cover all of this. I guess I could start in here with a little bit more where I've got, do I have some of this out? No, okay. I'm doing it again. I need to make a little sign, put a little sign that says, speak up. Can't decide if I like these stitch bows. If you ask me right this minute, I'm gonna say no. Where is the end of this? No, I don't think I'll buy any more of these. I like these better. Is this the same color? $8.91. No. That's $3801. What have I done? Well, this is gonna be slow stitching, not because it's slow, but because I'm slow. I'm not taking my time. I'm, I think I'm just going to do, this is three strands. Well, should I do three strands there in the middle because I did three strands there? Kind of just want to do two strands. I, I think I'm just going to do two strands and then if I want it more dense, I'll just stitch, do more stitching. <laughs> That's what I'll do. And I usually steam this floss when I pull it apart, but the iron, I have to get up and walk across the room. And I'm sure the iron has gone back to sleep or whatever it does. Let's see. What needle did I have? That one's really short. Hmm. Well, y'all probably don't want to watch this. Um, I was curious, one of the, um, a comment that I had from Christy, she was talking about a live. And I thought about doing a live video, but I just wasn't sure if, if, you know, I don't, I don't know. I just wasn't sure if it would be interesting. But... Uh, I am curious to know if you are someone who enjoys or watches live videos. Um, what time of day is best for you? Do you like them in the evening or do you prefer watching them? I mean, in the daytime, I know that a lot of people work. I'm not working outside the home anymore, so... Um, you know that I'm I'm here during the day. I'm daytime hours too, but I know a lot of people can't watch during the day. But I was just curious if you in if you do like watching lives, do you ever watch any during the day, or is it primarily only um, in the evenings that you watch them? I can't decide what I. after I said I wasn't going to cover this completely. I guess I'm not. But I like this combination of doing um, floss and beads and maybe even some more of that silk ribbon. 
I don't know how much of that I have. This piece that I used was actually stuck on my bulletin board up here and it just happened to match. So I'd have to go look in my stash and see how much of that actual ribbon I have left. So. Okay, how long have I been at this? I don't want to make, I don't want you guys to be bored. Um, click away, 35 minutes. This is just so, um, we'll just say, I bet my blood pressure is really good right now. I just love doing this. I'm gonna go long right there. And I need to not be so literal with this. I need to... Mm, I think I'll stem stitch, kind of, even though it'd just be a little. Um, I need to not be so literal with it though and like color outside the lines if you know what I mean well that's not really a stem stitch but oh, not at all I'm gonna do that I'll just go back over it thought about putting some beads up here so I might do that. I wish I had some um, I wish I had some fabric in this color that I could use to like applique on top of some of this. I think that would be pretty too. Part of me though, I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, oh, that's a lot of work for a journal cover by the time I finish this thing. I'm gonna have a lot of hours into it. Might be a prettier wall hanging than, than a journal cover, I don't know. And I'm just, I just sort of make it up as I go, I'm not really following any, mm, that doesn't look good. So I just change it up. Could do like some satin stitch right here, just go thicken this in. Sorry, it's hard for me to talk and concentrate at the same time. I need to do some pink on here now, some lighter pink. See how that's gonna look. I'm not liking how long that is. Let me go back over here and do another, do another one to fill that in a little bit. I guess because it doesn't, they're not as round. This is three strands and this is only two, so. Okay, that's enough of that color. I'm going to, I'm going to pull in some of the pink. I'll do that and then and then I'll sign out. Of course you guys don't have to watch if you don't want to. So let me do I want this one. 
this pink. Yes, this is like cotton candy pink. Two or three, I'm gonna go back to three. I, I did kind of like the, it. The two looks really thin. Wait, that's, oh. Let me do it from this end. That was still two. This does not want to cooperate. There we go. I, um, one of the things I said I would try and make a video of is me dismantling how I dismantle these, uh, those fabric swatch books that you get, like that, you know, decorators get. I had a bunch of them. I have a bunch had left over from when I was, um, working. I worked in the textiles and design and, um, so I had a bunch left over from that. And then one of my friends that's a designer got rid of some a couple of years ago and gave them to me. So I have some that I haven't dismantled yet, but they're those big swatch books. We, we called them header cards, fabric, well, fabric headers or those big, anyway, they're a beast to take apart. Um, and I use, that's where this, like this fabric right here came from. Um, I was saying I use my upholstery tools to take them apart. Like a, a crowbar, a, pr a little pry bar and pliers and, um, so I may have to do a video if, if you get your hands on those because they're, sometimes you can get some really cool fabric from them. Uh, and sometimes between the way that, I mean, depending on how the book was assembled and all that, you can hardly get anything out of it. I've got one that's a bunch of silk and the paper that's on the back of it absolutely does not come off at all. So I end up getting, once I take, you know, I mean, I end up getting this two inch by three inch piece of silk out of this page. But hey, a two by three piece of silk is a two by three piece of silk. So, I need to do that. Oh, I love this pink. I love this candy pink with this orangey pink. Okay, I'm guessing nobody is still watching, so I'm going to let you guys go and um, I will see you all in the next video. I don't know what video that will be because I do have some ideas of some other stuff to do. But quite honestly, all I wanna do right this minute is work on this. I just wanna keep sewing on this. See, I wanna just keep sewing. I don't even wanna reach up and stop the camera. Okay, at the end of this one, I'm gonna, when I get right there beside that, then I'm gonna sign out. Okay, that's what I've got for you today, guys. I hope everyone is doing well. And again, I appreciate all your comments. Thank you. I read them all. Sometimes I just don't um, reply very promptly. Um, so please forgive me if I haven't replied to yours. But I appreciate it very much. And I hope you're finding something inspiring to do today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.